One of the most convenient things about owning a Tesla is being able to control it through the Tesla app. There's a lot of really cool things that you can do from the app. It's not too complicated, but I wanted to make this walkthrough video for new owners or potential new owners to just kind of know what to expect. So when you first open your Tesla app, this is what it will look like. At the top, you have the name of your car, which you can customize through your Tesla. You have a little chat icon and a menu. If you have multiple Teslas or want to add another Tesla product, you can hit this drop down menu and see them or add them here. If you open the chat, sometimes Tesla likes to send updates like company updates or ask for feedback. Or if you have service like I do, this is where you can see some reminders of things like that. And then the top right menu, that is your profile and other things here. If you click on your profile, you can see things that you can edit here. We'll go back and go to charging. It's important here to add a charging payment method. If you hit add payment, you can add your credit card. So when you go to a supercharger, all you gotta do is plug it in your car and everything automatically is done through the app here as far as payment goes. You can also see charging history, which is very cool. All the superchargers you've ever been to are right here in the app. And then the for your other EV section, if you do have an EV that's not a Tesla that can use Tesla superchargers, this is where you would add it. I don't, so mine is blank. Back to the menu, if you have Tesla insurance, you would go here to manage your policy or your payment. It's pretty cool. You can actually edit your policy at any time through this Tesla insurance tab. But if you don't have it, don't worry about it. I'll go back and we'll go to my products. And here is where you see the Teslas that you own or the solar panels that you own. If you click on one, you'll see the screen where you can add drivers, remove drivers, and edit your vehicle with things like that. The rest of the menu looks like this here. Refer and earn. Sometimes Tesla runs referral programs. They currently have one here. You see the details here. And if you hit refer now, you can copy your referral link and send it to whoever you want. And if they buy a Tesla or a Tesla product through your link, you get certain benefits. Then you have ways to redeem. Not gonna go through all of them clicking, but you kind of get the idea just by looking at them. Loyalty benefits have been around for a while. If you're a current Tesla owner and you buy another Tesla, you get certain money or certain discounts towards your new Tesla. I'll scroll through them here so you can see them all. The shop is just the mobile version of the Tesla shop. Accessories, charging stuff, apparel, you can go through all that, but this is where you would find it here. Discover, honestly, kind of the same thing. Got the Tesla shop right here. Some services for charging your non-Tesla. You can order a car through your app if you want to. And then some other things down below if you have Powerwall, Energy, you can find more or learn about more through this tab here. And then lastly, charge your other EV. If you have another EV that's not a Tesla, you wanna charge it, you can do that here. See which chargers are actually compatible. I'm not familiar with this part of the app, I never use it, but if you are one of these people, here's where you go. Back to the home page, we have our row of quick control icons. You can customize these if you hold down any icon. You'll get the full list of what you can actually put here. So if I want to have fart as quick access, I can hold fart and replace something else up here. Then if I go back, I'll have the fart icon right there and I can just tap it from here and make my car fart. Below our quick control icons, we have our current music playing in our Tesla. You can pause it, skip it, adjust the volume. Very cool. Now, if there's a software update or like me, an upcoming service appointment, you'll get a little reminder in your app right here so you don't forget. And then we have the rest of the fun stuff in the app. So controls, just like it sounds, you can open your frunk, you can lock and unlock your car, you can open your trunk, you can open your charge port, and then you have some other quick control icons at the bottom here. You can also check your tire pressure in the top right, that little PSI button, and it shows you right there. Next we have climate. I'm sitting in my car with my climate on right now, and you can see that I got my seat cooler on. It's set to 72. If I wanna adjust that, I can hit the arrows and go, cooler or warmer. If I want to turn it off, I can hit the button here and turn it off completely. I can vent my windows and if I want, I can also turn the other seats, warmers or coolers on by just tapping the button over there and the steering wheel warmer if I want to as well. But it's still summer here in Vegas. So let me turn those off really quick. Now pulling up this climate control menu, we can defrost our car, go into camp mode or dog mode or turn on cabin overheat protection. If I turn this on, you'll see three different temperatures and what cabin overheat protection does is if my car is sitting in the sun all day, I can set it to let's say 95 degrees 
and when it gets to that point in my interior, the AC will kick on and keep my car at or below 95. Or I can enable no AC and just have the fan running when I'm not in my car to keep the car somewhat cool. I like to keep mine off. Here in Vegas, if I'm in the sun, that uses a ton of battery. So what I do and what I recommend is before you get in your car, open your climate and your app and just turn it on. So that way when you get in your car, it's still cool, but it's not using the battery to cool your car all day when you're not in it. Back to the home screen, we have location next. That's where I'm at currently. It's not my house, don't worry. The top right icon, if you hit that, if you forget where you parked your car, this will give you directions to your car. The next icon just centers my car in the screen. The globe icon, I can switch between satellites and a map view. And the charging icon, it'll show all the superchargers near me and I can sort them by three lightning bolts, which means the superchargers, the fast chargers, or one lightning bolt, which are the slower destination chargers like hotel parking lots where you can plug in your car overnight. Now the next tab, schedule is pretty cool. If you, for example, let's say set climate and preheat battery precondition, if you have a work schedule that's consistent every day, like a simple nine to five, and you want your car at 850 being a certain temperature, having your battery warmed up, ready to go, you can do that here. So I'll say precondition, let's do 8.45 a.m. Monday through Friday, repeat weekly and create, and that way my car will be preconditioned Monday through Friday, 8.45. Scheduled charging is useful for if you have a time of use rate, and let's say your electricity is cheapest between midnight and 6 a.m. I can do start charging at midnight, end charging by 6 a.m. Let's do again Monday through Friday. And if I hit create, no matter when I plug my car in at my house, it'll only charge between midnight and 6 a.m. And then light show, if you wanna schedule a light show, you can do that here, adjust the volume, Pick your light show, it tells you how long they are. That's pretty cool, I didn't know that. And then schedule time for whatever you want by the minute, pretty cool, I didn't know that again. And then hit confirm and it'll start the light show. Next tab we have security and drivers. Very useful if you have sentry mode on, this first one here, dash cam viewer. If something happens and you're not in your car, before you'd have to come in your car and see what recorded here, but now you can view it from your phone right here on dash cam clips. You can do all or just sort by Sentry, see what Sentry mode recorded. Or if you saved something previously on your dash cam, you go to dash cam and you'll see it all here. Then you can enable settings like you can turn Sentry mode on from here as well, and then view a live camera if you want to. I'm not gonna go through what all of these do, but here's what you can turn on or off from this tab here. Add driver is useful if like my wife wants to drive my car, if she didn't have her own Tesla, I can hit add driver here, create invitation and then just send her a link. She can download the Tesla app and then she can drive my Tesla just like I would. The bottom of the app, pretty self-explanatory. Phone key, definitely on. Super useful, super convenient. And now my favorite tab on the Tesla app, charge stats. If you're curious how much money you're saving by owning a Tesla, this will tell you exactly how much. You can sort it by year or by month. Let's go by year, see my big savings here. So far it shows me I spent $244 on charging. Most of the time at home. This car has never been to a supercharger yet. I only charge at home. And here's how much money I saved if I had to pay for gas. If you hit the info icon, it shows you how it gets this number. It takes into account the monthly average gas prices in your state. So it does have some accuracy to it. And then here's my charging cost. You see home, it's 14 cents per kilowatt hour. If I go to settings and set up a rate plan at home, I can literally put in my electricity rates and have it be super accurate for my charging costs. Mine are about 14 cents, so I just put 14 cents generally, but that's what you can do in settings. Next we have upgrades, so we open that, we see software upgrades, that includes like full self-driving, you can do subscribe or buy it outright. If your car does have acceleration boost optional, you can add that as well. If you wanna to upgrade to the premium connectivity, if you don't have that, you can do that here as well. Then we have accessories, another link to the Tesla shop. Service plans is pretty cool. It's actually relatively new. You can add a windshield protection plan, a wheel and tire protection, or extended service agreement. You can click the details here to see what all of them include or don't include. And then installable upgrades, just like it sounds. You can scroll through here on what your car can or can't have added to it. 
and then buy them from here if you want as well. Safety score will only pop up if you have Tesla insurance. You can see your safety score here. This is what your Tesla insurance rate is based off of. So if you want a lower rate, get a higher safety score. And to get a higher safety score, you can see exactly what it tracks here. So make sure you're good at driving when it comes to these things they have listed here. Service, if you don't have a service appointment, this won't be here either for you. And then a roadside, you can actually call roadside assistance from the Tesla app through this tab. I've never actually used this. We can go through them and see exactly how you can do it. Let's say flat tire. I guess it knows my tires aren't flat because, oh, I could click one, I guess, but you can see the PSI that it clearly says that they're not flat. Uh, you have other options here as well. So if you do need roadside assistance, this is where you would go to get that. Then the bottom of the Tesla app, it shows your model, your miles, your VIN, your software, specs and warranty just like it sounds, kind of how you bought your car, what came with it, and the warranty that you currently have on your car. You can see that here as well. And the last tab is manage drivers. Just like before, you can add a driver. Same idea, add driver, create invite. You can send this link to whoever you want. They can download the Tesla app and they can drive your car with their phone, just like you would with your car. And that right there is the quick rundown or walkthrough of the Tesla app. Like I said, not much to it, but a lot of convenient things. And hopefully if you're a new owner or soon to be new owner, you learn something about the Tesla app in this video. I made a video before going through every single setting on the Tesla screen. So if you wanna watch that, I'll leave a link somewhere on screen right now. So go ahead and click on that. Make sure you like and subscribe if you like this video. But as always, thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next one.